Oh my goodness. We have this whole place to ourselves. What is going on guys? We're out in the mountains, deep in the mountains if I may say so. Long drive to get here. But this spot is worth it because, hey, if you can find a hot springs where nobody else is at, that's cool. That's really cool. The closer you get to the city, the more you know people there are, the more people that will take up the hot springs. And to me, when you want a little relaxation of hot springs, if you're sharing a spot like this with 20 other people, that kind of takes the fun out of it. That's just my opinion. So we have this whole place to ourselves here. In fact, we could go down to this pool right here. Let's feel this one. That one's nice too, but the temperature of this one is perfect. We have the source up there. In fact, let's go look at the source. Oh man, is this not amazing? Here's the source. It just flows out of the side of the mountain. Isn't that so crazy? It's just kind of, kind of random. Just have this spot where water just gurgles out of the earth constantly. Ooh, that's pretty, that's a, uh, the source is very, very hot, but by the time it trickles down and flows in those pools, it's cool to where it's per a perfect temperature. I mean, I expected it to be hot, but this is... So like the hottest a hot tub can get, like one that you buy, is about 104 degrees, I think is max. And I think that this is about 105, 106, I'd say. Oh, guys, this is so perfect. Um, it's crazy because like uh, in Montana, in places like that, the hot springs that flow out of the ground there are actually a lot of times too hot. And people actually die every year from, they'll see like this big beautiful pool, they'll jump in it and they'll die. They'll, they'll scald themselves to death, especially if they like jump in a deep one. But around here, the, the water that flows out of the ground is like 110, 115 degrees or so. And by the time it, you know, slides down the hill, goes over a waterfall, it's perfect hot tub temperature. All right, my friends, we're gonna do something here that you guys, some of my subscribers said I should do. We have eggs here. Last time I visited the hot springs, people said you should see if you can boil eggs inside the hot springs. And so what we're gonna do is, I don't think this pool has a chance, but up by the source, we have a chance. Let's see if we can do it. All right. So there's the pool, here's the source. We're gonna take our egg and we're just gonna lay it right there. You know what, this is a deeper pool. So I'm gonna kinda dig it out. There we go, so we can completely ooh, submerge the egg. Keep him behind a rock there. All right, let's see if that turns it into a hard boiled egg. Whew. It's cold outside the hot tub. Look at this, look, somebody pour, literally came out, they put in all the work of pouring concrete. Kind of a poor job on that side, but still, kudos to whoever came out and did this. They have steps up here. They have, they put rocks and concrete, and look, there's a step down like that, and then into the hot springs. Whew. Let's go check on our egg. All right, all right, let's see here. Let's test it out. All right, the moment of truth. Did we hard boil the egg? 
Oh, no. <laughs> it's, uh, it's very warm and slightly, nah, I don't think it changed at all, really. It just, it's the same. Oh, that's crazy. There's the yoke. Just the yoke right there. Oh, there you go. All right. Well, that didn't work. I think you need a lot hotter water. That was a dumb idea. Whose idea was that anyway? Oh, getting out of the water. Getting out of the water. Get all cold again. Oh, it feels good in here. It's probably about, air temperature is like 50, 52. So it's not too bad, but it's, uh, it's kind of chilly. So the next plan of attack is uh, we're gonna do some fishing. But I wanted to enjoy these hot springs this morning while it was cool and rainy. It's supposed to clear up later. So I wanted to hang out here for a little bit, but we got a river right down there that we are gonna trout fish in all wild and uh, rainbow and brown trout. We're actually in an area where we have a chance of catching a bull trout, kind of a rare trout. So, and we have br uh, brook trout as well. So bull, brook, rainbow, and brown. That's a lot of trout. This looks good. Check this spot out, guys. A little bend in the river. Bends in the rivers are always usually good spots for trout. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Let's get our fishing rod. Today, I just have one fishing rod, keeping it nice and simple. Six pound test line, Shimano reel, Shimano rod, little spinner. Somebody's here making rock formations. Oh man, is this great or what? All right, folks, so the lure I'm using up close here, it's a little MEPS. MEPS number two, Agala. That's one of the oldest lures ever made, a little MEPS right there. My dad said that back in the day, first cast of the day, by the way, he said when he was younger, the MEPS was the uh, bread and butter lure of most fishermen. Switching lures here, the tried and true silver, blue fox doesn't make sense silver blue fox but it's a silver blue fox spinner silver spinner fly to the other side yes yes get down there with the big ones guys i got one first cast first cast with a silver spinner i want it i thought this i'll get a heavier since we're fishing deeper water i want a heavier uh, spinner on to get down there, oh yes. <laughs> First, like within five, five seconds. Oh, we got a rainbow. We got a rainbow, folks. Got light lines, I gotta be a little bit careful here. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, we did it. Oh, and that is a good eating size too. Oh, look at that beautiful mountain trout that is what I'm talking about guys on that first cast like five seconds in with the silver spinner look at that guys probably about 15 16 inches nice little rainbow this is gonna cook up wonderfully all right so I knocked the trout out with the rock we're gonna cut this guy's gills Guys, I'm telling you, mountain trout taste amazing. Lead them out. All right, let's see if we can get one on the second cast. Guys, it, it swirls so deep over there, and then there's this big rock where the, the current hits up against it. I thought, there has to be, there have to be big trout hanging out around there. All the way to the other side. size and another it looked like a rainbow 
To be honest, when that got close, I thought it was a kokanee. It looked like a kokanee. But I can't, maybe that's just wishful thinking, I don't know. Anyway, they're biting this, folks. Check this out, guys. Kind of similar spot. You have a big um, stone wall and the current's pretty fast around here. Let's try this. Check this out. Whoa, somebody left a whole bunch of hooks and split shots and swivels, a whole box of them. <laughs> Score. All right, first cast at this spot. Whoa, there was a bite. There was a bite, 100%. Got one. Oh, thumped it. Woo! What do we got? Something small here. Little rainbow, looks like. Still, he, that, guy, that guy pulverized that spinner. Full-on wild trout. Man, the wild trout are so gorgeous. Wow. I catch a lot of stocked ones. When you get near the city, you catch a lot of stockers. All right, beautiful little fish. Not gonna keep him. Just let him go. There he goes. Sweet. Well, we got a trout and like five or six dollars worth of sinkers and hooks out of the deal. Let's move on to another spot. So guys, walking along here, fishing. And I see this cave here. What is this? What is this? Hello? Is this some, it's like a mine shaft. Oh yeah, like it echoes. Could you guys hear that here? What, 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 I'll drop a rock. It like echoes back there. Hello? Creepy. Huh. All right, this is gonna be last cast of the day here. See those rocks on the other side? We're gonna fish those, and then I'm eating something. Wonder what's in there? Is that like a mine shaft? It might be like a mine shaft or something. That is cool. Well, my friends, I am hungry, and that is not the only cave there is on this mountainside. Let's go and start cooking up. We have a little bit of a hike, but I'm really excited to show you guys this spot. This not amazing. I just found this place a little while ago and I thought I'm coming back here. The cave is not too spooky as far as caves go. Um, it does appear to end, but uh, we all know the story of Bilbo Baggins, so I'm gonna keep my eye out. But from what I can see, there's water coming out of there and uh, she's pretty solid. The floor seems pretty solid. So uh, I think we are safe in this cave. All right, so another fire is going reasonably well. It's time to prepare the trout. Folks, we are using bacon. Bacon wrapped trout. I've done this once before and it was mwah. We're doing it again. Fire roasted bacon wrapped trout. So I'm going to cook the fish in this metal grate right here. Um, but before we do that, we have to prepare it. First thing I'm gonna do is score 
the fish very well. So that way the bacon flavors can get down in the meat. We'll do both sides. And I'm gonna take the trout, we're gonna season it really well with my first cast seasoning, of course. And uh, make sure that gets down in there, put some inside. Kind of rub it into the trout there. Next, we'll take some strips of hickory smoked bacon and we'll wrap the trout. You know what we're gonna do first? We're actually gonna lay the trout in the grate there so it's all done by the time we get done wrapping this bad boy. And <laughs> there we go, folks. A fully bacon wrapped trout. Just close this thing up. That is what I'm talking about. Now over our fire, which has burned down a little bit. We're just gonna let this guy roast. I thought it was appropriate since I was out here to grab a Mountain Dew. So I can handle it, I've actually reversed the situation. There, that's better. Now I can uh, adjust it as needed. My friends, I think it's safe to say fire roasted bacon wrapped trout is done. Don't stick. There we go. Woo! And on this side of the trout, we will add some chips. So we got fish and chips. Fish, chips, and a Mountain Dew. A nice way to end the day. Let's say a prayer real quick. All right. Wow. What a blessed day. All right, let me show you guys this up close here. So, <laughs> so what I do here is I grab off a piece of bacon. There we go. And a piece of trout, just like that. Mm. Folks, I'm telling you right now, you guys go out and do your own catch and cooks, wrap your fish in bacon. It's a game changer for fish. I don't think there's any better way to cook a trout. I think I've perfected it. Wrap it in bacon, roast it over the fire. I felt inspired by this little thing here, Ashley and Tyler something. I think it's 4, 42315, I believe. Unless that's, is that 05? It looks maybe like it's 05. Back in 2005? That's crazy. So what I'm gonna do, let's see, right over here, I'm gonna say, oh my, uh, Stuff is crumbling there. Right, here's a bigger piece. I'm gonna say Ace Videos was here. Ace Videos was here, it's not very neat. And then what is the date? 6, 17 of 2020. There we go, Ace Videos is here, 6, 17 of 2020. If any of my subscribers come and visit this spot, put your name right there. I wanna see it when I come back. Well, my friends, this has been one of the coolest places I have ever been to. Unreal, unreal. This is so amazing. Guys, don't forget to keep getting out there, trying new things, and leveling up in real life. 
this is what happens when you get out there and just, just keep trying stuff. You never know what you can discover. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one. See here, we got a little path down this way. Oh, look at mushrooms. What are those? I do not know what those are. I'll have to get my, brought my mushroom book with me. Um, oh, wait a second, okay. Wait, which way do I go? Let's try this way. Oh my goodness, look more. What are these? Wow. They are everywhere. Oh, this is so cool. Oh, check it out. Look, more mushrooms, a waterfall, a crystal clear creek. Wow. <laughs> what is going on, guys? Oh, I am in the Appalachian Mountains, and I've just discovered a brand new creek here. So I was out driving the other day. By the way, quick tip. A lot of people ask me, how do you find all these cool spots? I spend hours driving around. I find creeks on a map, on literally a paper map, and I'm like, let's try it. And so I'll go and I'll drive to Creek X and I'll start hiking along it. And a lot of times it's a bust, but a lot of times I score. And I certainly scored here, at least I think I did, but I'm in the mountains and I'm excited that there might be some wild mountain trout up here. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to, what I'd like to do is fish the waterfall. I've learned in my time here in the Appalachian Mountains that when you're going for trout, if you can fish, yep, here we go. If you can fish in the waterfall, those are the best spots. Oh man, this is, this is cool. I have to be careful not to slip on any of these rocks here, but check this out. This creek goes for miles. Um, at least on the map and uh, I don't see any reason at all why it wouldn't be loaded with wild mountain trout but I guess I'll have to see all right let's get my backpack out here I'm gonna show you guys something I brought a bunch of stuff with me because I wasn't sure what to expect so it was like well, might as well pack everything. So I've got something here. I uh, brought this fly box full of little flies there. Don't know if we'll get to all this stuff today, but I've got uh, certainly some flies in there. This is actually, I think my dad had a friend just like give this to him. And we're not fly fishermen in our family. Uh, so we've never really used any of these, but I thought I'm gonna bring this this time. Then I have a whole bunch of little Dry Creek trout tubes. Just little micro, extra soft, one and a half inch tubes here in all these different colors, some yellow ones there. So might try some of those. And then I have here some salmon eggs. And then of course, I also have some night crawlers. And we'll probably, and I know I'll start off with night crawlers here. The thing I'm most excited about are these little tubes, but I'm gonna put those away just for the moment and we're gonna use night crawlers just to like, get an idea I guess of what's in here or if there's anything in here because it's not good to come to a brand new spot and be using brand new like experimental baits so let's drop a worm down first first cast of the day by the way <gasps> I got one I got one guys oh my gosh oh shoot it was a rainbow son of a gun that was like second cast. Oh, flipped it behind that rock. Haven't done that yet. Let's see if there's anything back there. Got one, got one, behind the rock. Behind the rock. What do we got? A little rainbow. Woohoo! First fish of the trip. Not a big one, but we don't expect to catch a ton of big ones here, guys. This is probably gonna be pretty much the average size 
Now the question is, do I keep one this small? And I'm going, no. This is probably about a five incher. Beautiful little fish, but let's wait for something just a little bit bigger. That's what's always, whoa, hold up. Got a crawfish right here. Is he alive? Yeah, he's alive. Barely. Something must be wrong with him. Huh. All right, we'll set the trout there. I caught, just caught my first crawd out of the day. It's like something is, he's barely moving. Huh, interesting. You know what I might do, folks? I think I'm gonna use this guy for bait. Yeah, I'm gonna take the meat out of the shell. Sweet, first crawfish of the day. All right, let's get this trout off the hook now. That was cool. It's funny how like everything's relative. Like if you're fishing a big trout lake, there's no way you'd keep one that small. But now that I'm fishing a tiny creek, you know what? I changed my mind. I hooked him in the eye. Let's keep this one. Let's keep him. Anyway, when you're fishing at a big trout lake, of course you never keep one that big, but when you're micro stream fishing, this is uh, pretty normal to keep one this size. All right, folks, and just like that, a little trout and a little crawfish in the bag. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So, crawfish, some of the best bait out there. It's like this one, this one is sick or something, so I'm gonna kill him real quick. Then we're just gonna twist the tail off, all right? Just like so. Take the back fin off, and it leaves us with that little tiny chunk. There we go, and it's not much at all, but it's the smell of it that the trout loves so much. It's a little tiny piece of meat, and this gives off a terrific smell. In fact, what you can even do is when you get a big crawdad, you can take the um, meat out of the claws, but this guy's not gonna have enough claw meat for the effort, I'm afraid. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave that. Let's see if I can get any on that little chunk of crawfish. Crawfish going down. Got him, got him, on the crawdad. On the crawfish. Yes! Another rainbow trout, <laughs> sweet! Excellent, excellent. And this is definitely a keeper size, about a seven incher. Beautiful rainbow trout there, gobbled up that little teeny tiny piece of crawfish. They, it's just irresistible to them. All right, where's the bag? All right. <laughs> there we go, my friends. Two trout. And I haven't even explored all the rest of this creek. I'm just gonna work my way up. All right, folks, now it is time to begin a little bit of experimentation. One of the reasons why I wanted to come out here was to try all of these different tubes here. I wanted to try some different colors of these micro tubes. You see I have six different colors here. I already know this one works for trout because I've caught, this is called Happy Meal. I've caught trout on this one before, actually in old videos like three years ago. This one, I haven't caught anything on it. And then this is the natural series, it's called. More natural colored, these four here. This is changeable craw, which of course, I love this color for bass fishing. I've never really used these micro tubes for trout. So I'm gonna experiment around with some of these because we gotta decide which one of these is gonna go in the Ace Videos trout tube box that we're working on. This color and this color definitely are going in it. And um, we're just gonna see which ones make it, make the cut kind of a thing. So. I'm gonna try this color here first. It's called Hare's Ear. Hare, like a like a rabbit. Hare's Ear, let's try it. All right, micro tube in a color I've never used before. I'm going out. Are you kidding me? I had one, guys. I had one already. Second cast with it. All right, my friends. Got a couple of trout here. Let's move on, but before we move on, let's see here. Now up here looks pretty good, okay? I was gonna go check the mushrooms. You know, let's check the mushrooms first, and then I'll resume fishing. Check these out, let's see here. Um, they look kinda like a dirty mushroom. <laughs> yeah, I don't, huh. They just look dirty. All 
All right, I got a, a good mushroom, bad mushroom book here. It's not comprehensive, but it, uh, it has a lot of them, the common ones. Yep, guys, I don't, I don't see this guy actually one way or the other, if it's good or bad. Um, yeah, they look cool, but I'm only eating what I absolutely know and can identify. <laughs> well, my friends, that first spot was pretty sweet. And I'm just going to pick my way up this river here and just look for more deep holes to fish or good looking little runs. And I'm also keeping an eye out for uh, some crawdad spots. Look at that huge rock. I mean, it's like a nine foot tall, just giant piece of granite, I guess. I don't know. Broke off. Yeah, okay, there, there, all right, there's a log right here. Check it out, guys. Yeah, yeah, that little, that little corner right there. That should be good. Yeah, I'm gonna work my way around here. And I'm gonna throw it in from this angle. That way I'm kind of hidden from view. Got him, got him, in that, oh shoot, shoot, shoot. There he is, there he is. Wait, he's right in here. We got him, almost. He's under a rock. <laughs> he's under this rock, hiding. You know, all right, I'm gonna do something real quick. I'm gonna kind of dam it up here. Where's my bag? All right, gotta run over here. I gotta grab the red bag. Use it as kind of a net. So I'm gonna put the, the red bag right here. I'm gonna dam it up on this side. And then I'm gonna try to chase him out of there. Hopefully he'll swim right in. I gotta lift this rock up. Oh, he did swim in. I was like, wait, what? All right, so I caught him in the bag. He, he was so fast, I didn't even see it. I think he probably swam in with all these leaves and stuff. That's why I didn't see him. There he is. Check it out, guys. Little rainbow trout. That is so beautiful. It's interesting how the, the mountain ones are darker than rainbow trout you catch like in a lake. So interesting. It's like they're suntanned. All right, I'm gonna let this guy go. Caught him on that little hare's ear tube. That is super cool. Three bites on that so far. Whoa, ladies and gentlemen, as I was just walking, check out this huge crawfish. All right, they're fast around here. Got him. Yes, a big one, guys. For these small creeks, that is a monster crawfish right there. Fantastic. Sweet. It wasn't even under a rock. <sighs> I left some of the uh, leaves and stuff in there so that I hoped it would, it would kind of calm the crawdads down. So, all right, two trout and a big eating crawfish. Just kind of foraging these streams. Guys, I see the tips of the claws of a crawfish sticking out here. Guys, I see a trout right there. That might have been a brook trout. Kind of spooked him. I don't think he's going to bite this. But I did see a trout. Got him, got him, yes! On the tube, I saw him swimming around. It's a rainbow, thought it was a brookie. Oh, caught in the tree there. Oh, that is cool. That is so, I, I sight fished for him. I didn't realize he had, all of a sudden I saw him like doing a, a little figure eight and I thought, wait, he must have the bait in his mouth if he's doing a figure eight like that. On that tube, folks, the hare's ear is getting it done. I think we'll add that to the Ace Videos trout box. 
Ah, uh, this is so cool. <laughs> there he goes. All right. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna switch colors and see about some of these other tubes here. Look at that. It's called Mocha Stone. Let's give it a go. Got him. He came up to the surface, guys. I took the split shot off and this trout came up to the surface and grabbed the tube. The tube floats when there's no weight on it. And I was like, I wonder if like, almost like a dry fly. Oh, that is a beautiful trout. Wow. Look at the pink colors on that one. That, that like looks a little bit different. Wow. That is so cool. 100% wild trout in these creeks, folks. All right. I actually want to keep one more, but this trout is so beautiful, I'm gonna let him go. Folks, that was super unique because that was the first time I've ever used a soft plastic as like a dry fly. The tube floats on the surface if I don't add a split shot. And I thought, you know, I think trout would still go for this. So I took the split shot off and just kind of twitched it on the surface and, that, and the, the trout got it like that. All right. So I'm kind of behind, hiding behind the big rock. Let's flip it in there. Got him. Got him. Same thing again, folks. The dry tube. Another rainbow. <laughs> what a fun, fun deal. About the same size. You know what? Should I keep this one? Yeah. Yep, let's have three. What a day. Folks, I've only actually been out here a couple of hours and all of this stuff here. What a beautiful trout. This is that perfect medium size um, where, you see that little tube right there? Where I'm not harvesting like a, a big one out of here, a 12, 13 incher, which would be big for this little creek. It's right in the middle, about seven inches or so. So I'm gonna keep this one. All right. Fish this spot out good. Scored a nice trout. On to the next one. Check out this pool here. I actually just scared a fish all the way in the corner there. So this is how I'm gonna crawfish hunt. I'm gonna take the trout out and I'm gonna actually fillet the trout real quick. Not fillet them, I'm just gonna gut them. They're too tiny to fillet. I'm gonna take them out here. I'm gonna throw the guts around in the water and that should draw the crawdads out and then I can just kind of pick them up. I do not want to waste a bite of the delicate and delicious meat on these. So I'm just gonna take the guts out and the gills all in one fell swoop. There we go. Look at this pool here. This looks good too. Um, let's see here. I'm just gonna throw it. It doesn't almost, oh, I see a trout swimming around. Almost doesn't matter where you throw it, as long as it's in the vicinity. Oh, you see him, there's the trout goes. It's like the crawdads just come out from wherever they're at because they smell it and they start searching around. All right, so all three trout are cleaned. And this was something crazy, folks. Look at this trout's eye. The crawdad must have eaten it out while he was in the bag, crawdads love to eat out the eyes of fish and the gills. So, yeah, kind of gruesome there, but sweet, a nice little catch of the day. This beautiful creek.
it's crazy to me how dark it's getting out here. Well, it's only like five o'clock, but in the shadow of the mountain, it's feeling really dark, but you can see sunshine at the top of the trees. And it's like getting really chilly out right now. That's cool. Let's cook. <laughs> you know what I'm gonna do, folks? It's like a table. I was walking by and I was like, this seems like a big table. I'm gonna cook on this. I was looking for a log or like somewhere cool to sit, but it's like flat or flattish right here. And uh, I can even fish one more spot in the creek if I want to. But this is where I'm cooking. Sweet. New bottle, the new bottle missed. Get a little clear creek water. Got here some salt. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, forgot that it had that. Okay, well, um, we got some salty water there. Well, I'm just gonna actually cook the crawdads for just a minute or two and then throw them in with the stir fry. I've got some pre-chopped vegetables and I planned on cooking the vegetables, the trout, and the crawdad all together. <laughs> oh, that water's boiling nicely. Look at these two. They are monstrous. Look, they think they're gonna climb out. Alrighty. Oh, no, he's like, that ain't, that ain't it. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, seriously, this is, it's been a while. These are the biggest crawdads I've ever caught in the Appalachian Mountains. And you know what? These seem like Idaho crawdads, like the species. These seem like in my home, home state of Idaho, that seems like the same species. There we go. I did not catch a small crawfish today. All right, three <laughs> absolutely wild rainbow trout from the mountains and our crawfish here looking good that should be enough just to just four or five minutes on them they'll finish cooking I'm gonna add a little sesame oil in with the butter and then the vegetables Put a little soy sauce in there. Just kind of slip the trout right in. Just cooking it on a low heat. And I'm gonna add a little garlic and herb seasoning. I have to say that these are some of the most mongo crawfish I've ever caught and I'm interested to see how they taste. It's just a thick, fat crawfish. All right. It peels very easily. The shell is soft, which is different. If you guys have followed my channel closely, I've been catching some of these Appalachian crawfish and some of them, the shell is super hard and it's no fun to try to eat them. I have to say the crawdads aren't very full. It's kind of a small piece of meat for it, but let's see how it tastes. Yeah, 
That's a really good crawdad. The meat is different. It's super soft. Right, so, so watch this. So the shell breaks really easily. And here we go. Grab the bad stuff out there. It's the most tender crawdad I've ever eaten. It's delicious. Let's give these wild trout a taste. That's an amazing trout. I eat a lot of stock trout, and there is a huge, huge difference. This has been such a cool day. Go out there and find your own adventures. I mean, watch this video. I hope it inspires you. Find creeks and rivers around your place. I do it all the time. You just gotta get out there and try it, so. Wow. What is going on, guys? Welcome to another adventure. We're back in Idaho. I'm out here with my dad. We're gonna do some bass fishing. Maybe some sturgeon fishing later, but bass fishing we're search for sure. We kind of have all day, so we'll have to see how the bass fishing is. If we really slay them and we're like, you know what, we're kind of done with this, we might do some sturgeon fishing later. But we are bass fishing, bass kayak fishing actually today. Uh, this is my dad's Hobie Pro Angler kayak, and uh, you yeah. you like this thing. I love, I love <laughs> and then I got the Outback for you kayak enthusiasts. We'll go over that in a second. But we're on the Snake River. Beautiful day out here. Um, it's early spring. So the bass fishing sometimes can be really good as far as you get your biggest ones of the year. So we'll see. We'll see. But let's, let's get it. out there. Let's do it. All right, guys. This is my craft for today. Uh, real quick, real, real fast rundown if you're new to the kayak uh, world. It's Hobie Kayak. It has the pedal drive. We got storage in there. We got storage, all our tackle stuff. Boom, right in there. Got a couple of fishing rods with us. All the camera gear, of course, and pliers and different things. And a real nice seat, so we just got a launcher. Growing up in Iowa, I can remember as a kid in history class reading about the Snake River and thinking, oh my goodness, would it be so cool to see that place one day? And now I live, you know, <laughs> live real close to it. So anyway, this is pretty special, pretty good time. And uh, we've caught some bass back here in these backwaters before, so I'm going to give that a try today. Let's see what we can do today here. This kind of weather, this kind of, uh, of uh, water temperature, most of the bite is a reaction bite. You pull it in front of their face, ticks them off, and they jump out at it. A bass is a lot like a cat. You know, you drag a ball or a mouse or something fake across the front of a cat and you just can't help but jump out after it. And, and uh, bass are a lot like that. Fish on. Woo! Hey! <laughs> I snagged him. I could feel him biting. Oh, he got off. There you go. Small mouth. Nice. At least they're following it. All right, so we threw that hard bait for a while. Now we're going to go after a little, going to do a little tube, a little double dip tube, Dry Creek Outfitter tube and Dry Creek Outfitter custom trophy baits bass scent. Let's try this out here, give it a little, make that bass want to hang on a little longer so I can get a good hook set in, make sure he wants it. Just kind of dance in that tube across the bottom. There we go. Fish on. Nice. Oh, that feels good. <laughs> See what we got here. Ooh. Ah, good little smallie. He picked that up, didn't he? There we go. Ah, nothing like it. Snake River smallie. There we go. Not a biggie, but a beauty. So we'll let him go and go after the next one. All right, guys, this is my first lure. I'm starting out with a little uh, strike. Yeah. Strike King. It's not labeled, but I'm pretty sure it's a Strike King just based on the look of it. A little shallow running Sartreuse crankbait because the water is quite, quite muddy. We got a little spot up here. Check out this spot. So right up there. Oh, it's not flowing. Normally there's a creek flowing in right up here. Let me back up. It's cool thing about this kayak because it has reverse. Oh, guys, check out the school of carp. There are a ton of carp right here. 
You guys see that? Holy mackerel. Oh, my snag came out. Look at all those fish. Whoa. That is crazy. Oh, I see some bass with him. I see some bass. No joke. There were some largemouth. I spooked him, but there are some bass hanging out there with him. All right, guys, so we have a situation here. At this spot, I, I saw like four or five nice largemouth hanging out right there, but I spooked them. They were in like six inches of water, but I spooked them, and I spooked kind of all the fish, so they're all kind of swirling around. So we're gonna leave this spot, we're gonna let it settle, we're gonna let the fish come back and all kind of settle down, and then we're gonna probably walk up on the bank here, and we're just gonna sneak up on them real subtly and probably throw in like some weightless tubes and see if we can sight fish for them. But we gotta be patient, gotta wait about 10 or 15 minutes for them to come back. We'll go down, we'll fish, we'll fish down here with our other stuff and then we'll come back to this clear water spot and we'll do some epic sight fishing right here. Um, one thing about the Snake River in the area that I am in, uh, 40 degree water comes out of the rock pretty much year round. So I'm sure you can hear the water, but what happens is that water, the trout farms catch a lot of it, but they don't catch all of it. And so, you hear that? That's, that's spring water or aquifer water coming out of the canyon walls, trickling down, and it just comes into the Snake River here. That's why you hardly ever see the Snake River around here. You just never see it iced over because there's always fresh 40 degree water coming in. And in the summertime, it keeps it cool. And in the wintertime, it tends to keep it kind of warm. So, uh, relatively speaking, between the speed of the water and the and the 40 degree water added all the time. You just don't get a lot of ice on this part of the Snake River. That might have been a little something there. Yep, there we go. I felt him pick it up. Come on. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good largemouth. I got him. <laughs> that's not the one we saw earlier. He's a good one. Nice. Oh, come to Papa. Woo. That's pretty. That is a pretty fish. Look at that. Got to get a picture of this one, send it to the boys. Let's see, come here, Bubba. There we go, look at that. That's a gotta go too. All right, nice. Oh yeah. Nice, that was fun. All right, my friends, here we are. We're gonna sneak up on this spot. We're gonna get off on shore here. You gotta be real cagey. Let's go get some bass. Let's get them. These bass are so shallow. Guys, there's so many of them. One swim over. Got him! Got one! Yes! Yes! Oh, drag's a little loose. Yes! Sight fishing for largemouth, baby! <laughs> right! Yes! Yes! Guys! Oh. Get these weeds out of the way. Not a giant, but a fun fish song will swim right over. Whoop! Look at that! Look at that! That is my first largemouth of the year. A sight fish for it. <laughs> nice little keeper there, probably about a pound and a half. I think this is gonna be the first ever largemouth catch and cook on my channel. All right guys, so I just came up with a crazy plan. There are so many fish here and the water's so clear. We're gonna put an underwater camera, we're gonna clamp it on and then we're gonna leave and let's see what swims up in here.
got this tailwater coming out of the trout farm up there. Let's see just for fun if there's anything hanging out down there. I'll show you what I've got on there here in just a second. There we go. Oh, it was on. It just took it. Took it. Oh, it's a nice trout. <laughs> nice. Nice. That's a pretty trout. Imagine that, catching a trout underneath the trout farm. Oh, he took it in deep, too. I think we're going to eat this one. Let's get him up here to let you see him. There we go. He'll eat. Got him again. Here we go. I don't know what it is, but it's a good one. Probably a carp. Oh no, that's a bass. No, no, that's cat. Oh my gosh, if that's a bass, that's a big one. Holy, that, no, it's a big trout. Oh my gosh. Can you believe this? Oh my goodness. Oh my heavens, that's, a, that's the biggest trout I've ever caught if I can catch him. Oh my gosh. Oh my word. <laughs> Look at this. Oh yeah. Come on, hog. Oh gosh. Jeez, I don't have a net. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is a good fish. Come on, stay on. Got to get over to the shallows. See if I can get him out over here. I think this will get it. Okay, now, reel them up, reel them up. Oh my gosh, look at this trout, you guys. Look at this trout. Look at this trout. Oh my gosh, look, it's a rainbow. I can't believe how big this thing is. He's still fighting me. Come on, oh gosh. I don't want to go, okay, I'm gonna have to tighten it down just a little bit. Okay, come on. Turn your head, come up here. Oh my word, look at the size of this pig. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay. Come on. No, 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 no. Okay. All right, I'll let you run a little more. Just get tired out and. Oh, I can't even lift him in the boat. I'm going to have to go through his gills. There we go. Oh my word, look at that. Hoo -hoo. Yeah, baby. Man. Woo -hoo. Yes. Yes, indeed. Okay. Check that pig out. Oh my goodness. Talk about some fillets. Woo. Yes. All right. All right, my friends. Here is the situation. I got my underwater camera up there. And I don't know if this will work, but we're going to fish right in front of it. And let's see if we can get some bass with the underwater camera down there.
Well guys, here's my verdict. The bass are too spooked. And with a GoPro, as I've learned over the years, when you put a GoPro down there with them, they're on high alert. They're like, something's not right. Or they see that device and they're like, I don't know what that is, but they're, they're just, their senses are all up and they're kind of suspicious of everything else when you put a camera down there with them. So anyway, we'll have to, uh, we'll have to try that another time, maybe when they're more aggressive, but uh, let's keep fishing. Hey. Which one do you want me to keep? You caught two? I caught two. Holy mackerel! Oh, that's a monster! That is the biggest trout that, I've ever that's caught. A, that's your personal best? Yes. Holy But mackerel. I need your stringer, man. This thing is terrible. Okay, my okay. I will, I will get the stringer. Oh my goodness. All Can right. I let him go? Oh, no, you let oh, him go. Lord. I've got it. What oh. is that, like a five pound oh, trout? I don't know, but. I, you know what? I think with if you want to keep fishing, I'm getting really hungry yeah, and I'm going to take too. him back and I'm going to start cooking. I got the bass and the trout. Guys, see what you got. Oh my look gosh. at that. Woo. Here, a nice large out and a massive trout. He, I had to kill him because he's got my bait. Oh, he, he swallowed it. I'm sorry, I should have told you. Guys, I mean, are we going to have a feast or what? This is crazy. Crazy cool day of fishing. Let's head back. Let's cook these up. My brother Mike is sturgeon fishing over there. I'll put a link to his video. I think he's caught, I know he's caught quite a few fish actually. And uh, so check out his video guys. I'll put that link that in the description. He's sturgeon fishing and trout fishing. All right, here we are. Hello, bro. How goes it? High sight fish for my first bass in a clear spot over there. No kidding. Yep, caught one. And Papa caught a massive trout, like a five pound trout. What? I have it on a stringer. How you, have you been doing? Good, dude. I got, uh, I got like a, uh, I think it's tickling six foot sturgeon. Um, Those shades, though. I know, dude. If you guys want any shades, go to my video. You'll find a link to them in the description. You know, I've actually had quite a few people ask me, bro. Where'd you get those shades? So, Are you gonna start a new trend? You know what? Maybe I will. Maybe I will. Oh, I'm, am I getting a bite? Oh, you. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Anywho, oh, I'm dressed in time. She jumped out of the water. Oh, really? Like, like 25 yards out, just jumped all the and only thing that didn't come out was the tail. It was epic. That really is cool. so cool. Yep. Knives out. Oh, look at this, guys. I mean, are you kidding me? I don't think I've cleaned a regular trout this big before, actually. Let's see how much this trout weighs. 6.04. That's after bleed out too. Wow, six pound trout. Yo, let's see what's in his stomach. Oh, it has pink meat too. It doesn't feel like there's much in the stomach. Oh, wait, wait, we got some stuff here. We got some stuff. That's interesting. Okay, so we have a ton of little snails and green algae. So this trout's been eaten green algae and a whole bunch of little snails there. That's crazy. All right, guys, get ready for it. Get ready. Whoa. Check out that gorgeous pink meat right there. It didn't, it didn't bleed out all the way. I thought it bled out, but uh, huh. kind of weird, but all right, my friends, now that our salmon, oh, I mean trout, is done. That's what it looks like, salmon. Now that's done, let's play a little largemouth here. This bass has like nothing in its guts. Really? Yeah, nothing. He ain't eating the thing. No, that's why he was hungry. He was the only hungry one in the group. There we go. Nice bass fillet. <laughs> you got two totally different types of meat there. We will start with a bass, since that's kind of a novelty. Cut it into some nice chunks. And then we have here, guys, we're gonna deep fry these fish. We're also gonna deep fry some pickles. This is some regular Louisiana kitchen fish fry, but to me it doesn't, uh, doesn't cut mustard. Cut mustard. Whatever that phrase is. So we have some black pepper here that we are gonna put in. And then we have here some salt that we will put in because the seasoning definitely isn't salty. And then something really fun. I have here Arizona Dreaming Salt-Free Penzi's Spices. I got some mail from some subscribers, the Garner family. They wanna thank me for the content. 
and they wanted me to send me a taste of Arizona where they used to live. They just now moved to Washington. And so we're basically making deep fried Southwest fish today. And we're gonna be real generous. Ooh, stings my eyes, the, the dust from it. Wow, this is some, this is packs a punch here. It's very light. It's gonna be spicy. We got some Southwest spice going on. Literally, the wind swirled some in my eyes there. I'm gonna mix that all around. I gotta go dunk my head in the lake real quick. Did not dunk my head in the lake, that was a joke, but don't get Southwest in your eyes, folks. I'm gonna put these fillets boop, in there. Add them to all oh, the oil is hot. Good old frying sound right there. Beautiful. We'll put the lid on. And then I brought with me today some pickles, my friends. I didn't want to bring the whole jar out here, but uh, wanted to fry some pickles. We will add some of this mix here and shake as well. So we got pickles and fish, and we'll fry them all together. I'm gonna to make my dad a nice little plate here. Oh, nice. I'm uh, fresh off my last cook-off win. Okay, get out of here. And, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, if you guys wanna check out the cook-off video Mike and I just did. All right, guys. Time to remove the fried baths. Oh, looking good. And then I'm gonna add while we wait, or while I bring this to my dad, we're gonna add some of these fried pickles, y'all. Thank you, pickle morsels. Now what, we'll add a piece of fish as well. Scoot over there, chumps. Put that on. Let's let my dad take a taste test. You know what, my dad has walked, has walked over there a ways, so I'm actually gonna take the first plate of fish and when he gets back, then we'll, uh, then I'll feed him. Say a quick prayer. Woo, what a blessed day. What a blessed, blessed day. I hear my pickles. You know, the pickles are only gonna take a few, they're gonna, they're gonna take like a minute. I think. All right, fried bass. You know, I'm gonna dip it in this fry sauce right away. Mmm. Oh, hot. Hot, but it's good. Let's check out this fried pickle situation. Don't want to overcook these little suckers here. Flip our fish. Oh. Pops, you are just Ooh. in time for oh fried word. pickles and fried fish. So let's do the pickles first here. And that's bass, just to let you know. It's not the trout. We'll try the trout in a second. Okay. What do you think of the fried pickles? Lovely. Lovely? Ooh, good. Lovely. I have not tried them yet. Okay. What do you think of the bass? Bass is good. Bass is good. Not great. I right. think, I myself personally wasn't like, whoa! No, no, so no. I mean, the coating is good. The fish is okay. Uh -huh. um, and I'm hungry, so. I'm really grateful for it. <laughs> I want to try frying up that trout next, but uh, not a bad plate. Mm -mm, not at all. So we have here the trout fillet. Now before we add it, we shall add some more of this. Make sure to keep away from the eyes. And we add our trout. And here is the trout going in. Ooh. And we'll... Uh, Give him a little friend here, a little bass fillet. Mmm. Ooh, looking good, looking good. We'll give this a little flip now. And a little flip around. And you can tell the color difference in the two fish. Wow. That is what I'm talking about right there, folks. Ooh, I think it's done. So beautiful. 
Oh yeah, the trout's starting to fall apart. That's a sign. It's done. Look at that, folks. Look at that. And before we sample this, got a whole plate of, of pickles here. Not a plate, a little bag. A ton. Oh yeah, stir those around good. Reminds me of working at Chick-fil-A in the back, cooking up chicken nuggets. You gotta stir them so they don't stick together. Pops, if oh, yeah. you would try the trout and tell us how it compares. Alright. Ooh, look at that. Oh, that is so hot. I might have to wait just a second. Yeah, look you want oh man, pinkness. Let's wait a second for that to cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, All right. go for it. Here we go. Texture is fantastic. Flavor is good. You know, it needs a little more salt. Needs a little maybe, more salt. Yeah, maybe I didn't salt my stuff good enough, well, which is rare for me. Well, and it could be that I'm so used to the ocean stuff here lately and everything. Uh -huh. you know, but anyway, I think I need a little more salt. We need more salt on it, but it is rare it's, day, guys, that I good. under salt things. It's good. It's good. Yeah. Making me crave it. Trout. Oh. That looks like salmon. Mm. It really does have a salmon flavor uh -huh. to it, guys. It looks like salmon. Kind of tastes like salmon. The texture is definitely like salmon. I mean, it's, uh -huh. a, it's a good. Wow. Well, I need to get that. That is of one of the best trout I've, I've eaten. Mm -hmm. Wow, Papa. Good job. Mm -hmm. We are sitting there oohing and on over the uh, fish, guys. Oh, we forgot about the pickles. Yeah, they're, they're fine. We, sit. we weren't too long. Oh, man. Man, oh, man, oh, man. Southern fried goodness. Bro, you want to try some uh, Bro. fried pickles? Surely. Surely. I will try some fried pickles. I would pick the ones on the bottom that are not sizzling, man. Dude, let's see how you did. I'm the fried yeah, pickle king. You, you are the fried pickle king, that's for sure. Your whole family likes fried pickles. Your daughter. Well, hot. Oh, I got seasoning. Yeah. What is that? It's like a Southwest. They're like a Southwest pickle, basically. That dumb. That's fried fish feast going on here. If you guys want to dip them in a little of that sauce there. Mm. The sauce is the boss. That is good sauce for me. Yeah, that Southwest seasoning's legit. If anybody wants to send me any seasoning, you can always send it to Ace's PO box <laughs> and just mark it Micah. <laughs> For anyone out there. Shameless Ooh. man. Well guys we fished a little more and my dad caught two other ones but I caught I didn't catch any other ones but uh, it was still a great time out here. What a good time. Oh, well, good, recipe. Epic. good day. Good recipe. Make sure to check out Micah's video in the description below. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Incredible. Wow. <laughs> what is going on guys? Welcome to uh, another trout fishing adventure in the mountains at this creek. Um, I've been here, this is the second time, and I discovered the first time I came here, first time I discovered this, there are mongo crawfish in here and tons of rainbow trout. So I've decided to return and uh, so just gonna fish and forge around. Let's see what happens. So check it out. I've got all of these mini trout tubes with me. And by the time you guys are watching this, the Ace Videos Trout Tube Tackle Box should be out. I'll put a link to it in the description. Started out with like 10 bags of these and I narrowed it down to my five or six of my favorites here and so I got those, and I got worms though as backup too, just in case, I don't know, maybe the fishing's really, really tough or something, but these tubes should do well. The first color I'm starting off with is called crawfish. Just a nice, plain, kind of a dark mocha colored little mini tube there, an inch and a half. So let's try that. Also have these other colors here. We're gonna try, we're gonna get some crazy ones like Happy Meal, I love Happy Meal. Caught a lot of trout on that one. And uh, this is Scud Missile. 
Anyway, I'll show all of them in a second. Let's cast in this little, uh, this little creek right, or this little hole right up here. I just have this little mini fishing rod today. This is actually an ice fishing reel. And I put some four pound test on it. I do not like ice fishing. Um, I've been only been twice before. And so I thought, you know what? I bought this reel. The reel is solid. I'm gonna use it as a tiny like creek fishing rod here. And I, this rod's only five foot long. It breaks down. And uh, so yeah, this is my setup for the day. Oh wait, you know, I was about to take first cast. I almost forgot something really important here. Got here some Dry Creek Outfitters Trophy Bass Gel Scent. I know it says bass gel scent, but it's great for trout too. I'm gonna put a little bit of that on the tube. And when you go to order my Ace Videos Tackle Box, this will actually be linked right beside it, so. All right, let's go, let's go. Starting to rain again. It's kind of been a rainy, drizzly day. All right, first cast of the day, folks. So I'm just gonna follow this thing up. I just kind of fish all these little waterfalls. All right, guys, I want to fish that waterfall. So my plan is to sneak up, though, and drop my line in at just the right spot. Got him. Got him, guys. Got him. Oh, yes! <laughs> Look at that! That's what I'm talking about, first fish of the day. And that is a keeper for sure. That's a nice size for this creek. Oh, yes! Yes, yes! Oh, he swallowed it too, or it's in his gill actually, so we're definitely keeping this one. And guys, on that uh, hare's ear was the color that that trout wanted. Nice. I'm gonna bonk him real quick. Whoa. Look at that, folks. That is what I'm talking about. And to catch like a probably a nine or probably ten incher in a creek like this, that's a good eating size. Sweet. All right, ladies and gentlemen, using the same tube because you know that once you catch one fish on it, it's, it gives it a nice fishy flavor that other fish will like. So. Got him. Yes. <laughs> right in that waterfall. Very, very cool. I didn't even I think I had this one on for a while. And I didn't even know it. Because he swallowed it. There's slack in my line, and I was like, why is there slack? Oh man. Folks, they are loving this tube right now. Let's bonk him real quick. How beautiful are these wild mountain trout here. Caught them on hare's ear. What a dynamite color. I've got a lot of trout snacks in here and a snack for me. I'm hungry already. I'll be excited when I get to cook up some trout and I'm gonna try to catch some crawfish. All right guys, so I caught a couple out of this little run here, but I look up above and there's a nice pool right there. I'm gonna walk around, see if I can get to that. Missed him, missed him. Dang it. He had it, he was swimming upstream with it. Got him. Yes, I right by that waterfall. Another rainbow and another like decent one too. There are a lot of like really tiny like four inch trout in here. I can see them, but I've caught, maybe it's using the tube or something. Might be because I'm using a tube that I'm getting a little bit bigger ones. Sweet. All right, my friends. Let's see.
There we go. You know what, guys? I'm gonna let I'm gonna let this one go. I'm gonna let this one go here. Um, I think he went down the waterfall. Oh well. All right. Got him. Oh, did you see that jump? <laughs> oh, that is cool. Look at this guy. Look at him jumping. Nice. Oh, man. That is another keeper right there. I've got my three fish that I want, folks, to keep. So I like to keep ones that are in the mid-range. Um, and this one's about 11 inches or so. And so if I was to catch like a 14 or 15 incher, which would be huge for this creek, I wouldn't keep it because it's kind of like a trophy one. And then of course you don't want to eat really small ones, but catching nice medium sized ones like this is perfect because they're, uh, one guy described it, I think it was uncut angling, he said think of a pyramid where you have only a few giant fish at the top, a bunch of medium fish in the middle and tons of little fish that you don't want to keep anyway. So that's the idea. Some people ask me about that, why I keep medium sized ones and let the biggest fish of the day go. And that's why, especially at these creeks here where, you know, they don't exactly resupply that easily, I don't think, but I don't know. Maybe in these mountains they don't get disturbed very much. Onward and upward, my friends. I, every pool looks good, but I have to kind of be choosy. Check out this little run here, folks. This should have a fish in it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right here. I like it. I like it. Oops, not a good kid. All right. Here we go. Got him. Oh, a little micro trout. Oh, that is cool though. <laughs> right in that spot. Oh, there he goes, there he goes. Right in that spot though. I wonder if I'm gonna get any other kind of trout, like a brown trout or a brook trout up here. So far all I've caught is rainbows in this creek, which I'm not complaining at all. I just find that interesting because I know there are a lot of other species around here. Check it out. A little little salamander. That's cool. Careful, bro. Your trout bait that size. Trout will eat you up. There you go. Look at him trying to he's trying to burrow down in like the moss. Oh he is burrowing down. Oh that's cool. That's really cool. Further up and further in. Wow, at every turn, there are just more beautiful waterfalls and pools. I see trout swim around in there. You know, I'm gonna pause though on the trout fishing and um, catch some crawfish. The way I'm gonna catch these crawfish is take these trout and I'm gonna gut them. When I cook, I cook them whole. And so all I need is the guts out. Cut them straight up the middle like so. Oh dang, this is a female. Shoot, oh well, that happens. There we go. Now let's put this under water.
not gone for five minutes and already like everything is gone oh wait I see him over here he's dragging it he's almost to his lair I gotta get it before he goes in he's almost to his lair That is crazy. I can't believe I found my spatula. It stayed here, stayed in the water since last week when I was here. Didn't wash away. And this crawdad again refuses, refuses to drop the guts. All right, set my spatula there. That is super cool. And, oh wow, okay. At first I thought one got out. Guys, check it out, check it out. Got a big one here. Big one. Whoa. Whoa. I thought this was a good size. Check that monster out. Guys, he came up. He smelled the trout. See, because my trout are in this bag. And he must have... Oh, my goodness. Oh, this is so cool. All right, stick him in there. That is crazy. Biggest one of the day, for sure. Must have come out of that deep pool right there. <laughs> this, is, this is so much fun. This is what I love to do. This is my favorite Saturday right here. Bunch of trout and crawfish in there. Oh wow. It's kind of a little cave area back here. You know, could we find a cave? That would be really nice because it's getting a little drizzly out here. Oh, I see the river came through here this spring. And that's why all the stuff laid down. Oh, oh my goodness. Folks, I have a cave. Look at this. This is cool. I can, it's not exactly a cave actually, that's an exaggeration, but I can sit under this and be out of the rain. I can like cook under here. <laughs> nice. Everything's covered in moss, so it's pretty sweet. Look at this, all these big rocks and stuff. I like it. I like it a lot. I'm completely out of the rain here. Let's cook. Folks, I found that cave in the nick of time because the rain just started to really come down. And I'm glad I brought my rain stuff too, or I would have been hurting. I'm gonna hang the fish and crawfish right there so they don't get any dirt on them. Folks, this is why you gotta get out. You just gotta start exploring. Because you never know what you're gonna find or do. At the start of the day, I had no idea that I would be cooking up under this little rock here in the rain. It wasn't even raining when I first got out here, so, how cool. <sighs> Little backpackers set up here. I have all this stuff for making coffee, and I almost never do. I need to do that, especially on these cold days. The pot. And then check it out. I brought everything for a miniature crawfish boil couple of ears of corn there, some young potatoes, or no, not young potatoes, new potatoes. New potatoes right there, little miniature ones so they cook up fast. One well, of the first thing I'm gonna have to do is get water to boil. Let's go back down to the creek. That should be good. Alrighty, here we go. Corn is one of my favorite vegetables. This corn is so sweet, you need it raw. I think it's called honey suckle. 
honey cream something. Water is ballin'. First thing I'm gonna do is add, this is a mixture of salt and pepper, and add plenty of that to it. There we go. And then I've got here Slap Ya Mama seasoning. Got this uh, from a trip, Texas, Texas trip, I think. And um, I'm gonna just add a whole bunch of that to the water. There. Make this water Louisiana style, where they just, <coughs> they just put it in. <coughs> Tons of seasoning. And of course it gets in your throat. <coughs> then some Zatarans. Shrimp and crab boil. Make it a little spicy. Just like so. And uh, while that's heating back up, I'm actually going to add the miniature with the new potatoes in there first. Since those need the longest Cook. You know what else I forgot here, folks? I almost forgot it. I got ramen noodles. I'm gonna throw some noodles in the crawfish boil. Crunchy ramen noodles are good too. I'm eating everything before I even cook it. Alright. Potatoes have been cooking for a little while. Probably about 10 minutes or so. All right, so they poke moderately well. Still not cooked all the way. Here's my almost eaten corn here. Throw him in there. And him. Now, here's the question. Do I add another one? I don't know if I have enough room. Hmm. You know what? If it overflows, it is going to overflow. Dang it. Maybe I just eat this raw. That might be what I do. crawfish going in hot actually they're going in cold they'll soon be hot I got some nice crawfish today I cannot believe how big they are in this creek and in fact here's the pièce de résistance look he's taking a trout with him he loves the trout what the heck dude like, come on there you go. Force him down in the hot water there. He'll let go. Just stir it all around there. Let me see how my taters look. Oh yeah, look at it, just split apart. Oh, that is so perfect, excellent. Man, I am getting a little better at these crawfish moils every single time. Everything is coming out even. Alright, it is now finally time for the trout. Oh. Yes, 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 yes. We're gonna put these in and then let them cook for just like a minute or two. The very last thing will be the ramen noodles. I'm running out of room. It's a huge crawfish boil. Maybe I should have split it up into two parts. Nah, just tamp it down. Everything's good. Boom. I don't think there's any room for the ramen noodles. Okay. I break these ramen noodles sideways, kind of break them up a bit. I can barely fit some in here. One more chunk. Come on. Because these will collapse. If I can fit them in there without overflowing this, there we go. It'll all cook down somehow. All right, my friends, it's been several minutes. Looking good. Looking extra good. Look at Papa Crawfish here. Good knit. That is a monstro right there. Let's see here. I know the ramen noodles are done. Is the trout done? Come on, trout. Please tell me you're done. Oh, yeah. Yep. Coming away. 
perfect. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to eat it right out of the <laughs> pot here. Yeah, I'm just going to eat this big, <clears throat> this whole big uh, crawfish boil straight out of here. Let's say a prayer. <laughs> what a blessed day out here. At first I'm going to try some ramen noodles. Folks, that doesn't work. Since ramen noodles absorb whatever they're in, <clears throat> they absorb a lot of it, and they absorb a ton of the seasoning, and they're just over-seasoned. I should have just eaten them raw. The potato looks good, though. That's a little better, draining it off. Pop of crawfish is delicious, and despite like look how big those claws are, but they're so like slender. They're not the big fat claws. <sighs> These crawfish from this river are so tasty. I know that from previous experience. When you catch them out of a clear stream. You don't even need to purge them or nothing. They are good just like that. Mm. And boiled trout is seriously really good. Mm. Wow. That was tasty. I didn't realize how hungry I was until I started cooking. Maybe eating all that uh, raw corn. It'd be interesting to see how good it is when I'm not hungry. Guys, what a fun trip. By the time this video is done, the new Ace Videos Trout 2 box should be... We should have a bunch of them packed and ready to ship to you guys. Check out the link in the description. And uh, as you guys can see, they're super effective for trout. Hope you guys can catch a lot of fish on them. Check them out below. But thank you guys so much for hanging out. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next adventure. What is going on, guys? I hope you guys are having a great day. How about we go do some fishing? Check this out. We have this beautiful river here. This river is full of trout. The water is clear. Crawdad should be out. It's a warm day today, but not too hot, which usually means the fishing is gonna be fire. And I'm super excited for today because I have something a little bit unusual. So I was reading through my comments and I get a lot of great comments from you guys, by the way. And a subscriber was telling me, hey, you should try using crawdads for trout. And I thought that is a great idea. I've never done that before. Catch crawdads and use them as trout bait. So that's what I'm gonna do today. We're gonna go around and you can see the water's very clear, a lot of good rocks. We're just gonna start flipping over some rocks here and uh, find some crawdads. And then I'm um, gonna cut the crawdads up and use them as trout bait. All right, so we just have a very simple rig on here, just a split shot rig. I have just a regular um, bait hook and a teeny tiny little split shot on there. Now we just need some bait. Look at this spot right here. It's a nice rock. Should be a crawdad under here. Let's try this rock. Yep, there's one. All right, so I've already killed him, and we'll just, uh, that's just nerves. I already crushed him. I'm just gonna pinch off the tail. I think I'm just gonna, I think I'm gonna just take all the shell off. I think that would be best. Yeah, and just use like soft meat like that. By the way, the crawdad moving, for you guys who are new to the outdoors, all creatures move even after they're dead. In fact, I've had catfish that uh, you cut their head off, gut them, throw them in the cooler, and like 30 minutes later, they're still kicking in the cooler, but they have no head and no guts, so that's normal. 
so don't be alarmed that this that this part is still moving okay so there's a soft piece of meat let's put that on a hook slides on it seems tough the the crawdad meat does but not too tough seems like nice and soft like a trout would like to eat look at that little morsel that has to get a trout guys I gotta tell you I have a really really good feeling about this all right first cast ever with crawdad for trout I have used live like a whole live crawdad for bass before but never never this method for trout got one I'm not kidding you <laughs> what was that I don't, I'll have to count later but how, how many seconds what did I have to wait oh it's a rainbow looks like look at that guys <laughs> first cast ever and it's a wild trout too so if you guys are new to fishing whenever you have like uh, rivers and lakes stuff like this they'll have wild trout in them but the wild trout population isn't a lot there are a lot of smaller uh or the wild trout it just isn't a lot so what fishing game does is they stock them with stock trout just to keep the populations healthy and this is a full-on look how beautiful that is wild trout the only bad thing is he really swallowed that that is so cool the very very first cast so i usually don't keep wild trout just to you know just because they're not as common as like the stock ones but uh this guy he has swallowed the hook so well there's no way that's that's coming out so i'm actually going to keep and eat this one and so yeah cool so this next one will kill him like the last one and then what I'm going to do is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually take a piece of claw meat this time. Let's see if the claws have enough meat in them. Guys, look at this right there. That looks fantastic to me. It's going to go on the hook perfectly, I think. Look at that. That looks beautiful. Let's try that. Huh, I think I just saw a flash. I did see a flash right down there. Got it. Oh, guys, this is a good one. This is a good one. Oh, this is a good fish. This is a good fish. Oh, oh look at this. Look at this trout. <laughs> look how beautiful this fish is. I saw a flash in the water and I just I just cast it right toward it. Oh, this is a nice trout. Look at that, another wild one. Look how beautiful that fish is. Oh my gosh. Uh-oh. And he swallowed this. He swallowed it too. Huh, let's see if we can get the hook out. I cannot believe look how gorgeous that fish is. That is cool. I just saw a little flash casted right toward it that must have been him I'm gonna take the time here to find a few crawdads because um, I'm gonna cook up some crawdads with my trout later oh here's a nice one oh that's a really good one that's gonna have some claw meat on it right there. We'll save this one for eating ourselves. Well, excellent spot here, guys. A couple trout, some nice craws. Um, now, though, uh, we're just gonna keep, let's keep moving down the river and let's find another spot like this. Let's check out under this bridge here. I've never been under here before. Let's see, uh, let's see what's cooking. Huh. Yeah, there's a little pool right here. I wonder if there's some crawdads in this calm, calm little pool. 
there are big enough rocks to flip over, there will be. Yeah. Yeah, let's look for some crawdads here. Guys, look, I was just walking back with this crawdad. There's a nice size one right here. Got him. You know, when you're flipping over rocks, who knows how many I miss. There's doubles. This is a, oh, this is a dozen now. I've got a dozen crawdads. Let's find a few more so that we can have some for bait as well. And if we have room in the pot, I have a small pot that I'm gonna cook these in. If we have room, we'll throw the extra ones in. Well, this was a good little spot. Let's, uh, I'm glad I stopped here. Let's go keep moving and let's try to find a uh, fishing spot now. This is kind of cool. You know, I might, uh, <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm through fishing and catching crawdads, I might just kind of sit under here like a hobo and cook up, my, uh, cook up my meal. Now, this is a cool looking fishing spot as well. You know what? We're going to cast a line. Oh, man. Yeah, this looks really good. This looks really good. Let's get baited up here. The hook just like that all right oh man this looks like dynamite right here I'll get a bite come on take it got him oh it's a tiny one. Oh, it's a tiny tiny one that uh, oh this is a wild one too look at those colors look at those colors that's I've never caught three wild ones in one day there we go there he goes that is cool, three for three on the wild trout. Well, I thought that spot would be money, but it wasn't. I think it's too obvious of a good fishing spot, so it probably gets pounded. Um, so anyway, check this out though. Got my own little private beach here, beach with a view, and I am starving. So I'm gonna get my catch and cook stuff out and let's cook up a little dinner. Guys, this is, this is crazy. As I was coming down here, I, I had to leave my crawdads for a minute to get something out of the vehicle. And it's a good thing I was just gone a minute because a mink was trying to carry off my trout and my um, crawdads. Hopefully he didn't uh, cause any damage. I can, oh, look, there he is, there he is right there. Hey, hey, you. Oh, he's mad. Oh, he's mad. He wants it. All right, now look, you little rodent. I know you want it, but can't. I'll share some with you later. All right, I'm gonna. I have to. 
I have to prepare this trout anyway. Hey, hey, hey. He's mad. He's like hissing and... All right, just one second, dude. No, just one second. Hey, 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 no, no, no. I don't want to... All right, you. Come get your trout. You can have the head. You can have the head, okay? There we go. Hey, the head is yours. There you go. There you go. <laughs> That's funny. Got this nice big flat rock here. This will act as our table. Set up our catch and cook stuff. All right, while I was setting up, look who's back. Hey, hey, boy, he is bold as brass. You, hey, okay, so I have here, there's the trout. Here are the guts that I saved for him. We will set it there. Oh, there he comes through the water. <laughs> He smells it. Hey, you. Yeah, there's some guts there. There you go. Pour in the water. We're going to boil up the crawdads first. Look at this. Look at this little guy. He is. He's trying to get. Hey, hey, hey. No, no. No, you don't. He's trying to carry off my bag of crawdads. Look, look. Look, I can't even, I can't even cook anything. He keeps, he keeps coming back. I'm trying to keep my crawdads alive up until the last second. You, look at him. He is. It's like I really, really want one. I really do. Make a coat out of him. It's so cool how they swim. Don't you hiss at me, I just fed you. I'm gonna have to keep these up by me. So we got some water boiling, or starting to boil. The nice flame going on under there. And so while that's going on, I have for the lineup for cooking the crawdads in the water. I'm gonna put some of this Zatarain shrimp and crab boil, which is very spicy, very high concentrate. You only need a little bit of it. I'm gonna put some lemon, and then this is actually roasted garlic and herb uh, seasoning, which my brother got for me for my birthday, which normally you put it directly on meat, but I'm gonna add a little bit to the water uh, just, just for extra flavor. And then of course we got some salt, and uh, so now I just need the water to boil. Since the water is close to a rolling boil, we will add our salt. Always add plenty of that. I have done it before where I don't add enough salt to my um, crustaceans, and it the, the, like the flavor of them leaches out. We'll add some of our crawdad boil. I like mine spicy, so that was actually, even though that wasn't, that was actually a really good amount. And then some of this. I'm not crazy now. I can add my crawfish. I'm gonna turn it down a notch. And then we add some lemon. Gosh. Keeps trying to boil over. Have to keep blowing on it. Then we shall add our crawdads. Okay, they're hanging on to each other. Oh, look at that big dude right there. Big old claws, big meaty claws. You know what I'm talking about. Every time I do a video where I drop live crustaceans in the in the boiling water, there are always a couple of people in the comment section who are like, like, oh my gosh, that is so cool dropping five uh, crawdads in boiling water, or crabs or whatever. And it's not. It just it's not. A tiny crustacean in a th big thing in boiling water. It kills it instantly. As soon as it hits that water, I'm telling you, it, it at the very least just passes out and then dies. It doesn't sit there and go, oh my gosh, I'm dying, I'm dying. You know, that's boiling water. If you imagine, like imagine a big swimming pool 
and a giant swimming pool that's just rolling boiling water and you do a cannonball off into the rolling that ro rolling boiling water you would die instantly you might even die just from the, you might even pass out just from the heat of the steam before you even hit the water so <laughs> it isn't humane to drop crustaceans in boiling water and it's funny because I've, some people are like oh you you need to put them in uh, you need to put them on ice before you drop them in boiling water okay so slowly freeze them to death in the cooler before you drop them in the boiling water that <laughs> doesn't make any sense I'll just drop them straight in the boiling water. You can tell the crawdads are done when you see how there's some white there, like the, 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 the tail is splitting away from the carapace, and uh, that means that these crawdads, they're all about done. Nice, nice. We're gonna drain our crawls here. Look at that, isn't this, I got this whole little setup here uh, from Walmart. Voila. Bright red crawdads, <laughs> that looks so good. And then while the crawdads cool off, I'm gonna cook up my little trout here. And drop, oh, should have cut the tail off. Oh well. Oh well. Salt the little booger. And I'm very excited, look, garlic, uh, roasted garlic and herb seasoning. I actually brought it out here for the trout. Thought I'd add it to the crawfish too. Mmm, looks good. Looks appetizing. And squeeze some lemon right over it. Oh, fantastic. Oh, it is done. It is totally done. Check it. All about presentation. Say a quick prayer for this blessed day. All right. Trout with skin. Wild trout too. Oh man, that is too good. First time using roasted garlic and herb. My brother, my brother gave that to me. Thanks, bro. Let's try crawdad. Go for this big fella. Break off the tail. Peel the tail. I haven't seen my mink friend here. He should be coming around now that the food is ready. Look. Look at that. Mmm, not as good as a lobster or crab, but the best thing you'll ever find in fresh water. Look at that, that's a big claw. Not all the crawdads have claws big enough to eat. So it's kind of fun when you catch one that's a big enough claw. Oh man. And the claw meat's always softer, it, just like crabs. The claw meat's always uh, uh, more tender than the tail meat. Mmm, just a tiny bit of spice, but not too much. Mm. Thank you guys for hanging out today. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And I'll see you guys in the next one. What is going on, my friends? Welcome back to the Appalachian Mountains. I'm very excited. I just struck the mother load of trout. So, I've actually parked and fished at this place before. But last time I was here, there were hardly any trout, but there were tons of crawdads. This time I come and check it out. I'll put my polarized sunglasses over the lens. Can you guys see that? We have struck the mother load of trout, ladies and gentlemen. I, I don't know what is going on here, but it is spring. And the last time I was here, it is fall. Very, very early spring here in March. You can see things are just kind of starting to turn green. We've got some uh, some new growth here. I saw some daffodils popping up at various places along the road on my drive up here. So 
oh man, there, there's a couple of really big trout, but a bunch of trout in here, this, this is gonna be really cool. So I am, th there's one thing I have to say. I'm trying not to get too excited because a lot of times in these situations, in these small creeks and stuff like that, especially where there's this like main thoroughfare coming through here, you have a lot of people stop at a spot like this to fish for the trout. So sometimes they can be very pressured. So I'm cautiously optimistic, but I am excited because I have my uh, Ace of Videos Trout Tube Box link in the description. Just five amazing micro tubes for trout. I'm gonna start off with, let's see, probably this. No, I'm gonna start off with crawfish. It's the most natural color in there. It's just a nice little mocha colored. It's called crawfish. And you know, I'm not gonna, I was gonna put a little jig head. Well, yeah, you know, I am gonna put a little jig head with it. And I'm actually gonna rig this with the uh, internal weight method. Just sliding the jig head in the back of the tube. And it gives it a nice falling action. That's why you rig this way. And it covers that gray jig head. Um, trout in crystal clear creeks like this are very sensitive to color. Doesn't that look, oh man, just a little micro tube. I'm excited. That's all rigged up like should be. And then folks, I'm gonna show you guys something kind of crazy. I have here bacon. One of the reasons why I have bacon is because trout can't resist it. A lot of you guys may not have heard of that, but trout love bacon and so what i have this this is a backup bait it also can be used as a scent so i'm going to take this bait and rub the bacon on it and uh hopefully it gives it a good little scent there for those trout and then you also have bacon to eat later it's the best vegetable out there so there we go let's get fishing all right guys so as i was rigging up here uh, a couple of subscribers are here uh, they were just fishing down the way. Did you guys catch anything? Caught a few, yeah. I caught you got, a nice. You want, can I see them? Sweet. Now, is it normal for this many trout to be around here this time yeah. of year? Oh, yeah. They just stocked it. Probably oh, they just... Oh, sweet. Sweet. Excellent. Well, uh, this is uh, Jonathan. Daniel. Yo, you're Daniel. You're Jonathan. Anyway, thank you guys for watching my channel. So, sweet. It's always fun running into subscribers out here. And, uh, oh man, oh, there's a giant trout. I mean, a huge one. I gotta be careful standing in the middle of the road here. I don't, oh wow, oh wow. We've got some nice ones down there, folks. I did not see that one. Oh, I got a bite right away. All right, guys, after uh, many casts, I uh, can't get any of them to bite. They bit it when it initially dropped in front of them. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm to get tricky with it. I'm gonna come around over here. I'm gonna try to sneak around basically. I got one. Oh, it's a good one, too. It's a good one. Yes. Yes, yes. First fish of the day on the micro tube. Oh, it is a stocked one. That's all right, though. That's still cool. Very nice for eating. Perfect little size. I don't think there's a size limit around here anyway. But he got that little crawfish colored tube. Excellent. Got a little lunch, folks. And just stick him in this little dive bag here. And uh, come down. Let's see here. I come down. And I'm just going to leave him in the cool water right there. I'm going to eat him soon. So, yeah. Another snag, dang it. Oh, I got somebody else's fishing line. Oh, look at that, look at that, guys. I got 
a tiny little jerk bait. I caught somebody else's little tiny Rapala jerk bait there. That's like a five or six dollar find. Sweet. All right, I got a free lure. All right, guys, I have a new idea here. I see a lot of trout hitting the surface, so I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna try switching colors to this hare's ear, and we're gonna go completely weightless. I think that just a little weightless tube like this should get them if just skim it across the surface like a little bug. All right, I'm gonna do the exact same kind of routine there. Just sneak around. Got him, got him. Yes, yes. Oh shoot, that was a good one too. Guy's fishing it across the surface. Shoot. I just fished it across the surface, kind of like a dry fly. All right, so the trout seem pretty wise. Now, I'm not getting any more bites. So, I'm gonna test something out here. I've been wanting to see if there, if, how early in the spring crawdads come out or if they ever go away, because where I grew up in Idaho, they disappear for the winter time. They, they go really deep or they bury themselves in the sand and mud and you just simply can't catch them in the spring. But I don't know if that's the same case down south here. So let's try something. All right, so not only do trout like bacon, not only do I like bacon, but crawfish love bacon as well. So to see if there are any crawfish you put a strip of succulent bacon on. There we go, just like that. And uh, let's see if there are any crawfish down there. So bacon usually causes quite a stir on the bottom of any river or stream. And uh, before long I had these minnows around. I think these are blunt nose minnows, but a lot of minnows look similar, so I'm, I'm not sure, but I think they're blunt nose. And then the first crawfish of the season came around they do come out in early spring he had a hard time finding it there i don't know why he wandered off but they were down there i'm not sure that they hibernate here in the appalachian mountains and i could see him come up to the bacon there he started to haul it away and i hauled him up there's one little crawfish on it just one this will be the first crawfish of the year if I can get him. Got him! Yes! First crawfish of 2022. Fantastic little teeny tiny guy. Almost like major bait size there. Cool. Little buddy. You know what I'm gonna do? For uh for good fortune, I'm gonna actually throw this one back. First one of the year, we'll throw him back in the water, watch the giant trout eat him. So when I cast back down there, you can actually see a crawfish in the back there just chilling. And I wonder if that was the one that I had just thrown in there. Um, I'm not really sure. But eventually the bacon calls out one from under this big rock here. It's kind of interesting because he didn't go straight for it. In fact, he starts trying to climb the rock for some reason. I'm not sure why, he's not very coordinated, kind of falls off there. And then he wanders off, and he wanders off for a while, I'm not sure what that was about. But he comes back and he sees a minnow eating on his bacon, and he punches him out of the way. <laughs> These minnows need to watch out. I actually have seen a minnow pinched in half by a craw. They are prey. Uh, they seem pretty comfortable around him, but if a crawfish wants a minnow, he can snatch him, and he's got the power to uh, divide him up and feast. I'm not really sure what the crawfish is doing, because his rock is over there, but he's dragging the piece of bacon around. It's kind of a fight between him and the minnows. They keep getting their chunks, but he wants the whole thing. He's kind of struggling with it. It's kind of like when you have a really heavy Hello Fresh box. You kind of have to drag the whole thing in the house. This is sort of like a HelloFresh box to a crawdad. But I could see my bacon disappear behind the rock. Got 
got him. Yes. Second crawdad of the year. This one's a keeper. Definitely a little eater there. I wanted to show y'all something real quick with this. Um, so observe his color. We're gonna get inside my tube tackle box. This is the tube we were using earlier. Check out how similar he is in color to the tube. Look, he grabbed onto the piece of bacon there. Um, hey, a little monster. <laughs> All right, so you can see the color similarities. That's why this crawfish color it caught that trout earlier. And uh, look at him. I set him on. He's trying to grab my other piece of bacon. You know what? You deserve it. You know, you, you just munch on that. Have a good last. It's kind of like the last meal before you're... Ooh, that's kind of gruesome. All right. Now, you get in there. You enjoy that. And uh, that'll be your last meal. Whoa. Whoa. God. <laughs> Look at this. You guys caught all that in the time that I've been... Yeah. That's a huge one. Yeah, that's a big one. My dad got that one there. Wow. Yeah, I got a couple of these. Yeah. I got this from here. That, that is, yeah. that is gorgeous. Wow, you guys have a feast. Yeah. What, what were you guys using? Uh, I use a blue fox lure. A blue yeah. fox. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. I use a Thomas double spinner. Okay. What is it? Okay, cool. Yeah. Double. Okay, nice. Very nice. Wow. Yeah. That is I'm fantastic. Sure. You got cool. anything yet? Yeah, I got one a trout and a couple crawfish, so oh, I have awesome. a crawfish lying down there now. So, awesome. yeah. Oh, well, thank you. See you guys. Appreciate it. All right, my friends. After Jonathan and Daniel showing me that huge stringer of fish, the the trout might want something kind of fast moving. So this little jerk bait that I found, I'm gonna try that. That'd be so cool to catch something on a jerk bait that I catch on my fishing line. All right, got that rigged up. Let's go around here. I'm going to get try to get sneaky with it again. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Got him. Got him. I got one. On the jerk bait. Oh, ho, ho, ho. look at that. Oh, he's barely hooked. He's barely hooked. All right. I got to be careful. Got to be careful. Gotta be careful. Yes, I got him on the jerk bait that I found. That, ooh, either this is a stalker from last year or it's a wild one. It has like pink fins, huh? But on that little jerk bait there, folks, that I found or I caught on my tube. Look at the crawfish. He's just sitting there chowing down on the bacon. <laughs> the sun's come out. Look how beautiful it is. Look how clear the water is. Ah, I love being out here. Mm. Got him, got him. Guys, I thought, let's try something different. Let's try casting upstream and bringing it down. And that got a, a trout on that little jerk bait again. <laughs> that is, that is, oh man, this is fun. This is fun. Whoa, this is crazy. Look at that, never seen this before. He has a line that got broken off in his mouth. And I caught the line. Maybe I didn't even catch the trout. Well, no, I, I did see him in pursuit, though. I don't know, huh? Or maybe I just maybe I just caught the line that he was snagged on. There we go. Three. You know, I think I'm gonna keep three trout for the day. You know, I need, do need a few more crawdads though. But I think that does it for me. I think we got a nice little lunch here on this gorgeous little creek. All right, the trout are secured. Now I just got to cast in. I want to catch a few more crawfish. So this time I cast it into the deeper part of the creek, kind of the deeper vein right in the middle where a lot of the trout were hanging out. And uh, you could tell they were interested in it. They liked the smell of it, but it was a little too big for these ones. And I wanted to see if any crawfish dared venture out from under the rocks to grab it with all these trout swimming around. I don't think that crawfish are that scared of trout. 
even these big brutes here, check out these ones. Now, these two trout mostly hung out under the bridge, kind of out of sight, but these are the big ones. But you see here, the crawfish has it, and he's drifting downriver. The, the piece of bacon got pulled downriver, and a trout goes down and kind of is hanging out in the area, but he's just not interested in the crawfish. And in all the years I've been trout fishing, I have never cut open a, a trout and found a big crawfish inside. Maybe little tiny, like one inch or one and a half inch crawfish, but never a big one. And that is kind of interesting. They just come out, they're, they're not scared of the trout at all, even these big ones. But you see there's a nice variety there. Big ones, medium ones, then little small ones along the rocks. And then, uh, then my camera fell over in the current. <laughs> All right, my friends, don't know what happened down there, but while I'm waiting, I've got all the cook stuff set up. Here we go. Uh, it is just a gorgeous day out here in the mountains. What a fun time. Got my cook stuff set up here. We've got bacon. I've got biscuits. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a special dessert I'm gonna make today. Gotta cook the crawfish and trout. And then after that, we make something I've been really looking forward to. You know what though? Maybe I should just make dessert first. Cause honestly, that's one of the things I'm really looking forward to. Yep, I'm gonna do that. So I have here some biscuit mix. Peel it off, break the dumb thing. There we go. That part's kind of cool. We're going to make mini donuts, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. There we go. Ugly little donuts. Bring these over here. We're just going to... Is that hot enough? Yes, it is. It is. Scoot over four mini donuts. It doesn't take them long at all to cook. Just float them around in their little oil hot tub there. Now this is where the magic happens. So I take the little donuts out and I have here powdered sugar. And I'm gonna drop them boop, straight in the powdered sugar. And four. And we're gonna seal this up. Oh, didn't think that one through. They're burning through the plastic bag. They're too hot. I should have let them cool. It's my first time doing this. Okay. Don't laugh. I'm trying new things here. All right, we'll drop those little fellows in. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'll take this and coat them like that. Didn't think that one through. And then I will put the lid on, give it a little shake. Oh my goodness, look at that. All right, let's give these a go. Even though I'm starting with dessert first, I better say a quick prayer. Since this is the start of the meal. I've got people driving by wondering what the heck I'm doing. <laughs> got powdered sugar everywhere. This is really good folks. Oh man, oh man. I'm gonna eat all of these. I just made mini donuts, guys. Are you kidding me? Mini donuts. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> wow. This was a good choice to eat dessert first. <laughs> made a total mess here. Oh, that was good.
All right, after a sumptuous dessert first meal, it's time to fillet the trout. Are you kidding me? All the crawdads are gone. The crawfish are gone, folks. I can't believe it. Let's see here. You know, they're pretty quick. They're quicker than you think. They probably, probably gone. There you go. I thought the bag was sealed up. Maybe I forgot to put the snap the lock on it. I was eating dessert first when they made their getaway. So this just occurred to me. Those crawfish basically came, ate their fill of bacon, and then got away scot-free. Maybe we can get some to come out if I throw the trout guts. See, now what they're gonna do is they're gonna eat their fill of trout little monsters. I'm going to score each of these trout a bunch of times as well. I'll show you guys what I'm going to do. I'm going to do something kind of cool here. Look at that. A bunch of uh, bunch of cuts in them. And that's because I'm going to wrap these in bacon. Check it out guys. Three trout thoroughly scored. Let's break out the bacon. Take our little morsels. I have butter here. I planned on boiling the crawfish in butter, but uh, that plan's out the window now. Anywho, we still have the trout, so I will take the bacon and uh, wrap them up. Oh, what am I doing? I think I've never done this before. I like stock trout, and they're pretty good, but when you've had wild ones, there's really no comparison. Stock trout are decent, but they do need a little help. So that's why I have my first cast seasoning. Link in the description below. It's the best seasoning in the whole world. Just a light dusting for each side. And then I'll wrap it in bacon. And raw bacon, you can kind of stretch out and wrap it more than you think. It looks like we'll take two pieces for each trout. That is just fine with me. That ought to make a little stock trout absolutely scrumptious. There we go, three little morsels. We'll take the first one and lay them in there. You don't need a butter or oil because the bacon makes its own grease. It won't stick to the pan. Just like little pigs in a blanket. Mm -hmm. Bacon rat trout, nothing like it. Oh, oh my. That's what I'm talking about. That is exactly, oh, and it smells divine. Mm. See, that bacon just permeates the trout, gives it a lo lovely flavor. It's not something you'll find at the Ritz but it's a great outdoor meal. Mm. That's lights out. For stock trout, it's a 10 out of 10. Easy. Uh oh, five second rule. You got stock trout in your Lego stream? A little bacon will make them 10 out of 10. Oh, perfect. Mm, mm, mm. That's what I'm talking about. Well, my friends, a delicious lunch slash supper. It's like four o'clock, ended up taking me. I kept fishing. Even though the crawdads got away, it was still amazing. And uh, that just means I have to come back here and try for some more. I've already caught a ton of crawfish from this bridge. If you guys wanna check out that episode, it was really, really fun. Starting to really like this spot. And there's a ton of it 
to explore still. So, I have to come back out here. In the meantime, thank you guys so much for hanging out. I'll see you in the next one. What is going on, my friends? Welcome back to the Southern Series. I've been driving around the Appalachian Mountains, and the other day, I discovered a brand new fishing spot. This little creek up here. This is why you just drive around, and you just keep your eyes open, and you look. Because every once in a while, you'll discover a spot like this. A beautiful little creek going through the forest and this is public land this is actually a um, I don't know if it's a state or a national forest it's some sort of public forest and I was just driving along the road the other day and I was like you know what I need to fish this creek it looks like a perfect spot for some trout and crawfish yeah Oh yeah, this looks nice. Look, it's springtime, folks. Stuff is uh, getting green out here. What is that, speaking of which? Almost looks like some sort of herb. Anyway, it's getting green. It is early springtime. And uh, I'm just gonna go and explore this gorgeous creek here. This is something that anybody can do, folks. I mean, this creek goes back and forth under the road and uh, anybody can just stop and you can try out some fishing before or after work maybe plan on uh, cooking your dinner for the evening bring a few things with you and that way if you catch something you can cook it up got some waders on so that the uh, icy cold creek doesn't freeze my legs off I think what I'm gonna do is get rigged up before I start yeah I'm gonna get a tube from the ace videos tube tackle box link to this in the description and I'm gonna start out with my one of my favorite hairs ear it's called Are these in there oh All right, let's go. I love this. Just exploring new spots. Hmm. I'm gonna fish right under that log up there. Oh, <laughs> the wind caught, dang it. The wind caught it. Oh, I see a trout. I see a trout. He's looking at it. God, oh, he got off. He got off. Guys, there, a trout came right over. As soon as it hit the water, he appeared and, and grabbed it. All right, change up of plans here. I've decided to switch to this uh, tiny little brown trout looking jerk bait. It's great for a reaction bite. Sometimes, too, you can get bigger trout on these little suckers. Oh, I see a trout right there. I don't know if you guys can see him. He's like right there. If you get a bite on one lure and they won't bite it a second time, switch lures and sometimes that's all you need to do to get them to bite. He attacked it. Got him, got him. I, I saw the thump come over. One came over and attacked it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, hey, oh. No, no, gotcha. Oh. A little monster got him yes one came over and attacked it and he just he missed it or something I don't know what happened and so the second one came over and ate it yes first fish of the day boy this guy is is wiggly hey whoa this is a uh, desperate little trout look at that guys nice eating size there um, for a creek that's a good size for a creek this small. They generally don't get to be giants in here. Boy, this guy is feisty. I'm gonna, look at him. 
Sweet. All right. Couldn't get any more down there, so I'm gonna come up here and fish this pool up here. Just zigzagging back and forth across the stream. Just follow it up for a ways. Check it out. We got little flowers and stuff coming up. I'm so glad it is spring. This spot looks extra good. All right, what I'm gonna do is try to flip it right under the tree, or kind of under the tree, under the rock there. Give it a few flicks. Oh, there's a big one down there. Oh, there's a couple, a couple of them. A couple of nice ones. A couple of nice ones down there came out. You know, folks, I see several trout down there, but they, they're kind of just looking at it. So I'm going to switch back to the tube. That's the cool thing about sight fishing. You can see how they're reacting and switch up based on the fish specific fish let's see if they'll take a tube make it look like something that fell off a tree or something like that got him got him <laughs> on the tube oh it's a good one too it's another solid one like a 12 incher great for a creek oh guys check it out we got some green onion right here too look at that oh excellent trout and food in the wild this folks doesn't get any better than this ate that little tube there on a jig head and I've got some little like green onions people who live in the Appalachian Mountains call these something uh, I can't remember but there you go. Uh, great great eating trout right there all right about this green onion here you know I'm, I'm not gonna pick it just just yet so it's fresh I'm gonna keep fishing but I'll, I'll uh, definitely get some of that to eat with a meal oh this is fun this is a good time right here try to throw basically at the rock make it look like something fell off the rock into the water a little bug or something you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna switch colors from my uh, tube tackle box by the way guys if you want to support my channel and you will have a tackle box that you can use all year to catch tons of trout check out the Ace Videos Tube Tackle Box. Five of my favorite colors, comes with a bunch of jig heads, and uh, yeah, this is just amazing. And we made it, look how they're kind of packed in there. We made it that way on purpose, so that you can close the lid, and, uh, and I don't have pockets except on my waders. In this case, I can just stick it in the side of my waders right there. I've got just a nice little convenient package. We, we talked a lot about what kind of box we were going to put it in and most boxes when you go to the store and you buy like variety packs notice that like half or more is just empty space you're paying for that plastic tackle box and they, they fill it up halfway maybe maybe this is packed all the way and it's a uh, smaller so it may not look like much but this packs a punch all right time to move on i'll come back for the green onion like I said, there's a nickname that people around here have for it. Can't remember what it is at the moment. Look at all this dead wood here. Wow, it must have been some major, major flooding. Look at it. Snake City. <laughs> Glad I have my thick waders on. It's funny, this log smells really good. Oh, I love that smell. Like how it's like, it's old on the outside, but new and fresh on the inside. And it smells amazing. I wonder what kind it is. Huh. Look, there's a trout, he came out of nowhere. Got him, got him, right there. <laughs> oh, shoot, shoot. There he goes. Oh, there's two of them. There are two of them. Oh, shoot. He bit it again. He just attacked it, but did not hook up.
Got him. No, no, no. Missed him again. Why do I keep missing these fish? Oh. You know, one of my problems is this rod is like too light for this jerk bait as far as like getting a good hook set. Of course, I can hook it good into the uh, into the wood. Let me get down here. I'm gonna have to crawl forward so I don't spook the trout and get it out. It can, I can absolutely sink it into a piece of wood, but I'm having a hard time sinking it into a trout. I do need a little bit like stiffer rod for this type of fishing. Got him. There we go. Got it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes! Boom! Another excellent trout. There we go. You know, all three of them have been solid, solid creek trout, too. Um, I mean, normally when you cut these creeks, you catch a lot of like four and six and eight inchers. But the three I've caught have been really good. I wonder if they've had a chance to um, fatten up over the winter and get bigger. Maybe fewer people have been fishing for them when it's, since it's been winter, and so they've had a chance to get bigger. I don't know. I find it interesting how they're not hanging out in the deep pools like this, but in the shallow spots. I don't know, maybe, is it spawning? I thought trout spawned in the fall, but since I'm in Appalachian, maybe it's different. I don't know. Be way, we way, we quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. Uh, so I feel like hunting trout, hunting rabid trout. Uh oh, snagged in the tree. You know, maybe I better be done. Cut my losses here. Uh oh, in the tree on the other side. Come on. Oh, in the next tree, and uh, I gotta, you know what, I'm gonna be done for now. I got three trout. Had to work for them, but I got three. I'm gonna try to catch some crawfish now. I wanted to come back down stream here because around this deep pool looked like the best crawfishing spot to me. Get my knife out. The easiest way <laughs> I have found to catch crawdads in creeks like, th like this is to simply fillet your catch and uh, stick it on the bottom and they'll come find it. I like all these big rocks right here. So many spots for crawfish to come. Um, let's see, I think I'm gonna stick it right here. Well, there's one for the books. Look at that little guy. That is one of the smallest crawfish I've ever caught. And he's red too. Ladies and gentlemen, I've always wanted a crawfish aquarium and there's no better start than a little guy like that. I'm gonna consider it because I have, I have lots to do. I don't know if I need another hobby, but that would be cool 
to have a baby crawfish as a pet and watch it grow than eat them. Just kidding. Well, my friends, besides that little tiny crawfish, I have not seen any more. I wonder if in this creek it's like too early in the season or something for them. You know, we did just get done having a string of like 50 degree days. So, and today it's warmer, but it was, it was, it's been cold. So maybe they're burrowed down in the sand and mud still. I don't know. What the? Well, the head of the fish is gone. It must be under there. Oh, that's a big crappie. Whoa! Well, I finally, oh no! Oh, there he is. This guy's got big mitts, don't wanna mess with him. Got him. This is a big crawfish. Well, it took a while. I was wrapping up. And, uh, but we got one. Well, cool, one crawfish. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> Perfect, cool. I almost forgot. I came back for it. My little clump of green, um, whatever this, not cabbage, onion, green onion here. I'm sure that the forest floor, it's gonna have this all over in a week or two now that the weather's gotten warmer. Oh, look, check it out right here. I found even more. I thought there has to be more. If this stuff's growing, sure enough, look at it all over. There we go. I think that's a wrap as far as hunting and gathering goes. Let's get to cooking. All right, folks, so I had considered cooking on the back of my truck, but there's a park down the way and I'd like a picnic table. I'd like the use of a picnic table. Check out this spot. This is nice. Nice little park here. A solid stone and concrete picnic table. Just what I need for my slightly elaborate, yeah, slightly elaborate recipe today. So check out the spread here, folks. I am dual wielding today. I've got the propane and the butane burner going because I'm cooking fish and chips and I want them to both come out kind of at the same time instead of eating one and then eating the other. I have here a potato for the chips. The trout are ready, got the flour, and I'm going to use Zach Fowler's smoked chipotle hot sauce. Show you how I'm gonna use that in a minute. Got some Slap Ya Mama seasoning here that uh, I've had in my truck for a while and it's getting low and I need to use it up. Don't actually slap your mama, by the way, especially a Southern mother, because they slap back. Got my first cast seasoning and salt and pepper. And then something brand new here, a potato slicer or a, actually it's just any kind of vegetable slicer, but this is gonna make, I think, perfect potato chips for me today for our fish and chips. And then uh, I've got here, I've still got the little crawfish in the uh, bottle here. I think, I think I'm gonna have this guy as a pet. 
I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a little more thought on it. And then I've got here in the uh, in the campers coffee mug, the big crawdad. He's not too happy about being put in a mug, but he has a sealable top so he cannot get away. I've been losing some crawfish lately. All right, so this thing has like three different settings, and I'm putting it on one because that's the um, thinnest slice. And uh, anyway, take the potato and just start. Oh, wow. So they give you this device that uh, grabs onto it. And you guys can kind of see there, like, let's see here. See how that works? Very slick. And I have here a whole bowl of chips. <clears throat> Love trying new things. Have a new jar of Crisco. Oh, look at that. Just like the first scoop of peanut butter, you know? You don't want to ruin the top there. But you have to if you're going to enjoy it. I wonder how many people have eaten Crisco thinking it was like ice cream or whipped cream or something. This is really cool. It's the first time I've ever done two burners at once, I think. I think it is. What a cool product, I, th I think. It melts so fast, yet it hardens up so fast. Who invented this? Really? And then, while that's heating up, ladies and gentlemen, I have Zach Fowler's sauce here. He's actually the one that I invented my seasoning, but he produces the seasoning. When you order it from me, you actually order it from him, and he ships it out from Maine, where he lives, and uh, that's how that works. It's a great collaboration. He has a big online store. I'll actually link it in the description if you guys want to check it out. He and I are going to probably collaborate here soon. We've been meaning to for a long time. But anyway, I'm just going to pour his hot sauce out here. And this is, uh, I don't think I've ever done this for trout before. So this is going to be hopefully good. But take the hot sauce and then you take a nice little trout and you plop them in there. And that's going to be the coating before we drop them in the breading. There we go. And stick that on like this. Give it a little shake. And the trout is done. Voila. That was the shortening doing. Look, it's almost all melted down there. Oops. Well, this is real, folks. I actually forgot to add seasonings to the flour which isn't too big of a deal because we did just put hot sauce on it, but I at least want to put a little slap your mama and uh, salt in there. There we go. There. Now let's give that another mix. We'll do better on the next trout. All right, the oil is uh, definitely looking like it's probably hot enough here. And it starts to smoke. I'm just gonna give the trout a little shake. And, oh yeah. Oh yeah, in fact, I'm gonna turn that down a smidge. Here we go. Probably should have cut the tail off of him. That is one error there. They shrink a little bit though, but I should have cut his tail off. I think this is just about done. Bam! Sweet! First trout. You know, this isn't quite working out how I thought, because I thought that this oil would heat up fast, but uh, it refuses to heat up, so... Oh wait, you know what I need? <laughs> You'd think I hadn't done this before. I need, do need to turn this upside down. That does make it uh, more efficient. I guess that guy's bubbling a little bit. Well, we got one trout done. Let's get the other one here. I think we might be finally done here. Yeah. Good. Good, good. You keep... I have this turned up to the highest heat setting. Now we're cooking. Now we're cooking. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Chips and fish. Fish and chips. Fish and crisps. Whatever you call them. The last few potato chips. Cooking. I'm 
what a cool deal. How fun. Salt and pepper, these suckers. Oh boy, fish and chips. Macaroni salad's good. It's from the store. I didn't make myself. We do have cheer wine. We love cheer wine. <sighs> Definitely a southern thing. <clears throat> All right. Wow. That trout's really good. I love the kick between the um, Slap Your Mama and then Zach Fowler's uh, Chipotle. I mean, I got a nice, nice spicy flavor in there. And the chips. You hear that crunch? Mmm. I almost forgot. Got the crawfish here. big one. But I just have one. To be honest, I kind of forgot about them because I was real focused on cooking the trout and the fish and chips. And I think I'm going to let him go. I think I'm going to keep the little one. I might raise, try to raise a lobster. Or a, <laughs> a lobster. Whoa! Bro. Try to raise a baby crawdad. Look at... Hey, you... No, you don't. No, you don't. Look at the size. Hey, hey, hey. No, you don't. Look at the size difference there. <laughs> hey. They both want to run off the table. They're both trying. I don't want that big one to pinch that little one. But that is cool. I think I'm going to let this guy go, and I'm going to keep this one, folks. I'm, I'm happy with the, the trout and the chips that I have. You, you get a bigger container. You go in the coffee mug and you're gonna go out to the river. All right, my friend, here you go. Let the crawfish go free. There's one other thing that I forgot about. The green onion. Since I was deep frying today, I kind of can't think of how I would have incorporated this into a uh, into a recipe, unless you just deep fry this, I don't know. Deep fried vegetables, I'm not sure. Let's try a little raw. Doesn't taste like much. It's very aromatic. What I'll have to do is come out here and like this would be really good sauteing. So I'll have to have a recipe where I'm going to saute something and I'll use some of this. I'm going to take this home and use it. So guys, I'd like to point something out here. This is something that anybody can do. Think about how many bridges you drive over in a day and uh, there might be crawfish and trout under them. You could stop off after work and uh, catch a few, cook them up a little part like this. It's a really fun thing to do, and it's good. It's a good thing to do. I think it's important that people know how to um, catch and prepare and cook their own food. Um, I just think that's a good life skill to have overall. So anyway, super fun thing. I enjoy it a lot. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one.